Okay, welcome to our, our live video this morning. Apologies for my technical videos, that's, uh, that's entirely my fault. Anyway, let's get on with this. We're going to make sauerkraut today. Um, as this is a local council thing, we just want to start by acknowledging the Warren Jerry Wu Wurrung people as a traditional custodians of the lands, waterways and areas that we know as moorland. Um, we want to pay respects to elders past, present and emerging, as well as the First Nations communities who significantly contribute to the life of the area. So what we're going to do is a bit of a means to that as well. We're going to use some native ingredients, some Australian pepperberries. Uh, you can get them here in Melbourne from a place called uh, Melbourne Bush Foods. So hopefully um, you get access to some of these things. We can use some of the traditional and native species to our land. So to make sauerkraut, we want to get this bit done relatively quickly. Um, is to slice up the cabbage. So I've got a purple cabbage. You could use um, white cabbage if you want. You just want to take out the the core, because that bit's not too tasty. And then from there, we're just going to slice it relatively thin. Um, you could use a mandolin if you want, but it's not that hard to cut cabbage. The idea of this being thin is we're going to uh, pound this for, for quite some time, um, which I'll get you to do in your own time if at all possible, because it's literally 10 or 15 minutes worth of beating cabbage with a stick, um, which is a good stress relieving experience for you. Okay, so we're going to slice down our cabbage. Um, as we can see here, it's relatively thin, which is cool. So white cabbage, purple cabbage, uh, Chinese cabbage, like Wombok, is fine as well. And we get all that. Uh, into the bowl. I'm going to use a bit more than that. I will answer questions whenever you want me to. I'll just have a look at the screen to do so. Obviously with this you want your um, cabbage to be nice and clean. So we'll get that little bit there. Excellent. I think that's enough chopping for now. You could do as much as you want. You could do 500 grams, usually a good start. You don't want to go less than 500 grams because you're probably not going to fill the jar with anything uh, less than that. But a couple of kilos is good. A couple of kilos will get you three or four jars depending on the size um, of the jar that you use. So, what we want to do with this is uh, take our kitchen scales Hopefully you've got a set of scales, very important to use. Um, don't do what I did just then. Get a zero out your bowl. So we put our bowl on and we zero that down. If that's going to show up or not. So the reason we weigh this um, is we want two and a half percent salt. So for everything we do, um, you don't want to go above three percent. You could use two percent if you wanted a little less salt, but if you're starting out, two two and a half percent is great starting point because it's in the middle, and then you can work out your next one. Okay, so I need to see my scales now. So we've got seven hundred and eighty nine, seven hundred and ninety. Um, grams of cabbage. So essentially we want to do the math here and I'm of course streaming from my phone so that's not going to do me any favours. So you go 790 if you're good at your math times 0 0.025 will give us 19.75 grams of salt. So we'll put this up later but yeah 20, 
2.5%. What did I say? 19.75? Is that right, Bill? 19.75 grams of salt. Um, where you can, we use a, a Celtic uh, sea salt, it's an unrefined sea salt. Um, you don't want like an iodized um, cooking salt because if you're using cooking salt that's had stuff taken out and stuff put back in and it won't necessarily help with the fermentation process. This is a, a legitimate fermentation so all due care applies please um, be careful with it. What did I do there? 790. I said no, 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 no. almost there. That's our salt. Okay. Just make sure I got that right. It is Sunday morning after all. Good. Enough salt. Okay. Salt goes in. So we're going to put this into our um, bucket or a container. If you want to use like a, a flat container, it's good, like a baking tray. Because um, what we're going to do is beat it in a few minutes. So basically that all goes in and we give it a really good mix around with the salt. And we're going to massage it because you want the salt to be um, all over the cabbage. What you'll notice is once you've rubbed all that salt all over it, you'll see that it's already starting to um, sweat a little bit. Let me show you. So you see it starts to get a little uh, glisten on it, which means the salt's doing what it needs to do, but it's starting to, to sweat away. So we'll put that uh, down for a few minutes. Um, we want to give that at least 10 minutes. So. Hopefully I've timed this right, and we're sitting at 10 past 11, which is about right. So that's good. Okay, any questions? Doesn't seem like there's any yet, which is cool. If you have any, please feel free to ask them. I will do my best to answer. So that needs to sit for about 10 minutes. So um, not too much we can do in the meantime, so we'll do something else just for the fun of it. Um, let me put this up here so I can see. Oops. Oh, I won't do that. All right, so there's a few things we need to do um, in this time that makes sense. One of them is to sterilize our jars. So hopefully your jars are already sterilized, um, which means you put them through the hot setting on the dishwasher um, and then put them in the oven to dry. So the oven you put to about 80 uh, to 100 degrees just so it's at drying temperature. Don't put it too high, you'll, you'll bake them too much. So these are already sterilized jars, but uh, one step that you can do just to, um, Double check, make sure you're happy with them and we've got the drying time. We'll make sure our oven is on, on 100 degrees. Um, so just a, not lots, but just a bit of boiling water in each jar again. Again, hopefully they're already sterilized. And that was the sound of something cracking. That one. That's the other reason we do this is because sometimes the jars crack and what you don't want is to find out weaknesses halfway through. So we put our uh, lids. And then being relatively careful because it's just boiling water because that happens. We um, just turn them upside down so the lids Get a bit of hot water on them. Okay, good. Hopefully you've got asbestos fingers as well. And if you don't, 
Copy that. Very good. So again, they're already sterilized um, jars. We're just going to put them in the oven now for a couple of minutes to, to dry them out so they're completely safe. Do that in a second. Thank you to my lovely assistant off camera. Right, so what we'll do is make some chilies. So to do fermented chilies, which I've got these raging little hot um, habaneros, which will blow your face off, which is cool. Um, not something that's easy necessarily to eat straight away unless you're mad for your chili. So because of that, because they're super hot, um, I'll brine them and then we can turn them into a chili sauce later, which is uh, really cool. So to do that, your ratio for a standard fermenting salt brine in water, not like sauerkraut, is one litre per about three tablespoons. So again, we could apply our uh, two and a half rule to this as well. So I've got a 500 ml jar, so that means one and a half tablespoons of salt go into that. So your percentages are less percentage as much as our measurements. So one and a half tablespoons per half liter or three tablespoons per liter of water uh, for the brine. What we'll do is we will shove our chilies in here. This is a very easy one to do. They're just shoving without breaking if possible. Now what you might have to do with the chilies is put a bit of brine aside because as they um, pop open, they'll obviously absorb the brine in. So in a few days, um, you might just need to chop up the brine a little bit, which is okay. All these things, you just gotta keep an eye on them. Um, but don't be afraid to have a go at them. So that's our chilies packed into a jar. Um, what we can do now just to help us out a little bit, is we take a cabbage leaf. So we've got um, what you call a follower. So the idea of this is it sits on top and pushes everything down under the weight to stop things um, bubbling up to the surface. So just grab an onion from right behind it. Apologies if that's really loud through your speaker. Just got an onion and clove of garlic. So with the garlic clove, we just slice them up into uh, quarters. Like so. Shove him down in there. Very good. With that onion, I'm just gonna peel him back and put a couple of rings, not not too much, we we'll go over top here. Just to put a bit of flavour into there. Um, what I'm also gonna do is some coriander seeds. Oops. We'll clean that up later. Some coriander seeds go in and oh, I forgot my pepper. So this is our uh, Tasmanian pepper berries. So they are a native species to Australia. They're really unique um, in their flavour. To give you an idea, I guess, of what they smell like a little bit, it's a little bit like pepper mixed with uh, black tea. Um, and a bit fruity, so they've got a really unique flavour profile, um, which is super cool. You could obviously just use normal pepper, um, but given we live in a country that maybe we don't know a lot about the native foods, 
Um, Australian pepperberries are a great spot to start. So Australian pepperberry, lemon myrtle um, are really easy places to start when it comes to using Australian native foods. Um, you can buy these. Just FYI, they're not, they're not cheap, but you don't need lots of them. So you can get them um, online from Tasmanian Pepperberry Co. or you can get them from Melbourne Bush Foods. They're the only two places I know that sell them. Um, if you want those links, just message me later and I'll, I'll send them to you. So a few of those pepperberries go in there. Now, as you can see, we've got a fairly nice looking little jar um, of chilies, which is cool. So, onto that goes our brine. So I said we've got one and a half tablespoons for half a litre of water. That's our brine mix. You can obviously do this over the stove in a boiling pot. Um, I'm making this a little bit easier by just using uh, boiling water straight out of the jug, which is fine too, as long as your salt uh, dissolves in there nicely. All right, so our brine is dissolved and we're gonna pour that salt brine on. And then hopefully our little doobie whacker fits. Gonna give him a little push down. This one. So we're gonna push it down and it's gonna overflow a bit, but that's okay. We've got plenty of brine. So pack him down like that um, and then fill it up again. So give you an idea. So is the camera not being close enough? That's um, chilies packed into the water and then we've got all the um, onion stuff on top. So what we need to do is get that underwater. That's a, a really important part of this. So everything in fermenting just needs to stay sub brine. Is that a word? Submerged. Submerged, that's a better word. I think I like sub brine. I think we're gonna run with sub brine. So what you do, cabbage leaf, um, carrot top, onion, apple, whatever you can think of to not burn your fingers off with boiling water. That all goes in there. Then what we need to do is find a weight that fits. So you could use, um, if you've got bigger jars, use your actual ceramic weights you buy from a shop. Um, if you go down the river, get some rocks. Rocks, please boil them. <laughs> Um, you probably don't want, much as you love our local area, you probably don't want rocks straight out of the, the waterways into your food. So I would um, boil them for like 10 minutes so that they're um, sterilised and let them dry. Then boil them again and then dry and then when you're comfortable you can do that. So I'm very much hoping this rock will fit. And not quite though, which is okay. So what we can do... I've got half an onion, which we had before. So we push that um, on top of the follower. Notice that while we're pushing it, it's just struggled to get it below the lid, which is kind of what we want, because we want it to put pressure to keep everything under the brine. So that's gonna go on and we're gonna put in there and we're gonna use our lid to push down and lock him into place. So, Essentially, oh, what we've got is a little onion on top of there, which is pushing down the cabbage leaf, which is then requiring pressure to close and lock the jar. Then see, we've got chili submerged in a brine. What we need to do then is just once a day is burp them. So open the tops up, just um, probably in a bowl, because what you'll find is after a few days, they'll start to get a bit fizzy and you may get a bit of overflow. Um, because of that, the fizzy is okay. I know that's probably everyone's paranoid about that sort of thing. As long as your food stays below the salt um, and you're burping it, things will be fairly safe. Again, please do your research. One really good book, the starting point, if you are going to ferment, this is the, the book you must start with. This is a local uh, Melbourne lady named Sharon Flynn. This is Ferment for Good. That book is, is the starting point and the guide for everything you need to know fermenting-wise. It's really simple to follow lays out the things you need to be watchful for as far as safety but just burp it once a day which means you take the top let the gases come out lock the top back down after about five days we'll get something a little bit more um, like this one which is a completed product so that's our uh, fermented 
chilies, I've taken the weight out and they've gone in the fridge for about a week. Um, so I've put a little stopper on there, but as you can see, they've all stayed underneath, which is cool. So after five days on the bench, um, which in this weather is perfect, it's not too hot in summer, maybe three days, then they go in the fridge and then you can use them. All right, let's smash on with our sauerkraut. What you will need to complete your sauerkraut is a smasher or a basher or whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a rolling pin with the end chopped off it, which is very convenient for bashing things. Um, but if you don't have that, you can buy one custom built. They're pretty cheap. Um, a lot of kitchen warehouses will have them. Um, you could use an axe handle um, if you want to do a big lot and put it in a, a plastic tub. You know, something like we've got our tub in here. You could use an axe handle and just smash it down. You're going to need to get a little bit violent with it. So that's been under the salt now for just over about 15 minutes, which is what we wanted. Oh, questions, I can't scroll, sorry. Sorry, Diana. To answer your question, um, yes, you can use other vegetables. You could use carrots. Um, you can use the same brine with pickles, like cucumbers. Or you could do broccoli, you could do cauliflower. Once you've got that brine sorted out, so three tablespoons of salt per one litre of water, um, you may go forth and conquer um, with regards to uh, brining things, that's fine. Um, need to be sea salt. No, um, so Himalayan salt is fine. Apologies, I'm taking a little bit to get back to your questions here. Um, Himalayan salt is fine because um, it's got minerals in it, which is what you want. You just don't want cooking salt that's iodized cooking salt because it's, it's purpose made for chucking and boiling water and being super cheap. Um, but a, a decent quality salt. In fact, I think it's an Olsen salt, is an un, un um, processed salt, which is great. And I think that's about 10 bucks for five or 10 kilos. So it's not overly expensive. I've used a mixture of cabbage, ginger, garlic, mustard seed, cumin seeds. Yes, that is a great mix. You should definitely do that. So we've got a carrot, ginger, fennel, dill, chuck it all in. Um, we'll get to that in a second. So, use pink salt and it came out fine. Yes. Pink salt is fine. Lisa, you know what you're doing. All right, so it's been in salt for a little bit. So it's nice and sweated down so you can give it a bit of a squeeze. So first we give it a massage just to make sure the salt is getting through it. I'm not gonna make you endure 10 minutes of me beating this with a mallet, but I'll give you one minute of it. So lay it out in your tub so it's nice and flat and then Do that for 10 minutes. I'll do that later. I don't think that makes a great video, um, beating things to a pulp. So you need to do that for like 10 minutes. Like you need to beat it. If you can't do that, just get into it. If you can't do that, pick it up, squeeze it. Just get all of your rage, all of your corona anxiety, all of your isolation frustrations, just get that out. Yeah. I didn't get a summer this year, there was bush fires. Get that out. Job keeper, all those things. Just get all of that pent up rage out on your cabbage. You will need to beat it. I'm sorry if you if you don't have the ability to beat it, it's gonna be pretty hard to make sauerkraut. Maybe I don't know, just put it in a Ziploc bag in the back wheel of your car and just drive over it a few times. That could work. Um, right, so you can see after just a couple of minutes of beating, um, we're all getting already getting a little bit of liquid out of it but that needs to be beaten to a pulp so with the magic of television here's one i prepared earlier just give him another little beat up. um a good little squeeze out again very good and what we're looking for grab a little usable hand pull is liquid to be coming out like this that's our our hope so that makes our brine so instead of using a water brine we're actually going to use cabbage brine so have a look that's what we want we want liquid coming out of cabbage <laughs> my wife is nodding at me because i have made a batch of this where i forgot that process because 
When you do pickles, which I do lots of pickles, you squeeze and you throw out the water. Don't squeeze and throw out this water. That's a really bad step. May I have a jar, please? The one with the green lid. No, I gave you all the jars for the other. That's my bad. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the somewhat fun part and the bit we're going to get to where, as Lisa said, we put all our bits and pieces in. Um, Okay, <laughs> the beauty of earpods is you can hear all my conversations. Okay, so this is a very sterilized jar. Jar, sterilized jar lid. Um, as Lisa mentioned, we want to put some um, fun in there. I have never beaten my cabbage. Well, Lisa, you don't know the fun of beating your cabbage. That's how you get all your anger out. Okay, I only know my way, Lisa, um, which is how we've been taught by our fermented people, which is to beat it down. Um, it's pretty important because that's where you get your brine from. So if you don't have that, um, you're not going to have the brine. All right, so into there, we're going to grate a carrot. I think I put online for the ingredients ginger, so you chuck your ginger in there. Um, mince your ginger down nice and fine. Get that in there, have some fun with it. You can borderline make what they call kimchi kraut. So you shave down your cabbage, shave down the carrot, Chuck a bit of chili in there. Give it the kimchi-esque flavors. It's not kimchi. Kimchi is super hard, but I'm doing that today. Um, unless you've got 12 months, which I don't think we do because I've got about 30 seconds left. I hope no one minds if we go about two minutes over time here, but it is Sunday. Oh no, I still got three minutes. I was late. That's what happened. Okay. So we've got our um, squeezed out cabbage. We've got our carrot um, in there. I don't go over the top, just a bit of texture. I'm going to chuck in a little bit of ancho chili. So this is a smoked Mexican chili, just for a bit of fun. We're going to chuck in there some uh, dill seeds, just for a little bit of extra flavour. Nothing over the top here. Um, you can weigh them out and put a teaspoon in, whatever you want. Cool. Um, again, a few little coriander seeds. I, don't go overboard unless you want to. It's up to you. You can go overboard if you want. I just think you kind of want that sauerkraut flavour with a bit of fun. These are caraway seeds. Caraway is a bit of a traditional um, additive to sauerkraut. And I've got some of our uh, Tasmanian peppers that I ground down a little bit. So just a, a sprinkle of those. You don't need to put pepper. In fact, you could just do cabbage and salt and that's it. If that's what you want um, or cabbage salt caraway seeds is traditional but then just build it up play around with it a bit have some fun so we're going to give all that um, a mix around I put gloves on because we want purple hands um, so you can see here everything is mixed around really well we've got everything in there and then there's the fun part. Touch my computer. Purple on my laptop. See what we've got here. Spent 10 minutes worrying. Have you got habanero on your fingers? Please be careful. <laughs> Gloves and washing hands. And you know what? You feel a bit alive when you rub some chili in your eye. Bit of habanero in the eye, Julie. You know? It's just gonna wake you up on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Bit of a sneaky habanero between friends. Alright, not a work day. Let's have some fun. So, shove. Shove, shove, shove in there. Rolling pin, smash off. Push down. Get 
Hear those sounds? Those are good sounds. Those are sounds of brine and juice and flavour all coming out. So, that goes in. I hope you can see that coming up. You see the brine coming up? You can see it from the lounge room. <laughs> you can see it on the camera. <laughs> On the camera that's just me and my big head okay you can see here when we push down um, we're getting lots of that brine which is what we want you can see it from the side of the jar all that brine coming up which is cool that's gonna be a bit cabbage dependent isn't it if your cabbage is like super wet then you're gonna have bucket loads of moisture coming I feel like these ones are a bit dry but anyway we've got our we've got our brine and that will um, continue to emerge in the coming days so what I've got again we want to put a follower in I've gone one minute over sorry Heidi I've gone a minute over but it's Sunday and people can just tune out they don't listen um, so you've got two options when it comes to the follow-up you can put in the traditional way which is the cabbage leaf on top you can put that in your that way and you squeeze it down i bought these the other day they're really convenient so that goes um, on top which is cool it fits really nicely in this particular jar and then we do the magic of finding the right rock so again we squeeze down to get everything below the brine that's good get him in there push him down locked on okay so then as you can see here salty liquids of goodness oh there we go so we've got plenty of brine in there um things are submerged we're still gonna burp that every day so pop him let a bit of gas out lid back on do that for the next five days taste it if you're happy with it you could then eat it. Here's one that we made earlier. Um, as it gets fresher, all the rest of it. So you get those juices. This is one we've had since the 15th of March. So they keep pretty well in the fridge because it's cabbage and salt. And I'm pretty sure Russia was fueled on cabbage and salt for about 30 years. So cabbage and salt, easy. All right. I don't see what it was you put on top. I'll show you. I'm so lazy, I mix the salt and start using the mixture dry straight away. Yeah, you can do that. That's fine. <laughs> don't. Don't, Francis. Um, Alright. So, Francis, that is... You get these at um, most, like, canning shops. My fingers are super purple. Um, so that's like a artisan hospitality shop. Or you put a cabbage leaf on top. You just need something and then a weight to push everything down. That's what you're looking for when it comes to this. So jump on board with all of that. It's heaps of fun. Um, we'll see if there's any last minute questions. Otherwise, I think we're done. So chilies, um, burp them every day for five days, then in the fridge. Sauerkraut, burp it every few days, then in the fridge. Or I think as someone says, you just chuck it in the fridge now, but it just takes a while the flavors you get the the reason you put things on the bench and let them ferment is you get that injection of flavor and you also get like the probiotics and stuff like that we won't go into anything health wise because that's not my job um, but if you get the books do your research jump online have heaps of fun with it um, all right 30 more seconds any questions I reckon did I miss anything in the questions I don't think so I think we're done. Great job, love this video. Thanks, Diana. All right, cool. Well, it's, I think it's on the YouTube and it'll be on the story for a couple of days. So if you got questions, just message. I'll go on and check it. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned something. I hope I didn't um, freak you out with anything, particularly my habanero hands. I'll see you around the community. Bye.